I'm Rick Johansson and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I wanna show you an easy way to make pixel art. Here's a couple examples. We're gonna do this face and pixelate it. I'll also show you how to do a butterfly into an 8-bit, 16-bit. There's been some debate in my research on what is 8-bit, what's 16-bit. That doesn't really matter. In this case, my intention is to help you level up your Inkscape skills, or if you're new to Inkscape, you can follow along step by step and learn some of the tools. Specifically, we're gonna be using create tiled clones on the trace setting with an unset color. Jargon, jargon, jargon. What is he talking about? I'll show you. If you're just starting out with Inkscape, on the welcome screen, we're gonna be on the template called A4. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. And if you've never used create tiled clones, this is how it works. Take an object, go to edit, clone, create tiled clones, and you're gonna get a menu popping up on the sidebar. The first tab is called Symmetry. P1 Simple Translation, just leave it at that. If you look down here, it says Apply to Tiled Clones, Rows and Columns. Let's just go with four, four rows by four columns. We have our object selected and push Create. Okay, see what happens there? You basically created four by four of whatever your object is. Now they're called clones because you can then change the original object. For the fill and stroke menu, if you don't have it, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. I've got this object, this is the original clone, and you can change it, it affects the entire field. You can change the size, changes everything, you can change the orientation and the whole thing moves. This is the most basic way to use create tiled clones and you need to know it to do the next step, which is trace. If you've been following along on the channel a couple of videos back, we did how to make halftone patterns and we use trace. I'll just refresh you on that. Here is a circle. We'll make this our clone, except I'll use a tiny circle, almost like its own little pixel. I'll put it right here. And on the menu to make the trace work, first, if we were on the symmetry tab before with our four by four clones, let's go to the trace tab and you've got to select this thing right here, trace the drawing under the clones. So we're gonna use this girl, which is the example we did in that past tutorial. We're gonna to say to it, hey, take the color, take the color, and I want you to change the size of the clone. So we're tracing the image with this little clone based on the color. But I can't do four by four, that'll just make a little tiny area right up there. Let's do 70 by 70, create. All right, there we go. So it looks like just a screen. Doesn't look like much with the thing underneath. Let's move it aside. And there you go, it's pretty cool. If you missed that previous tutorial, check it out. You can do a lot with that. But, but I wanna show you why is the clones feature important, especially for pixel art too. The top one is always just a repeat to delete that. This is our clone, this guy or girl right here. Now, if I change this, I'm gonna widen it, make it bigger. That will make my half tone See what it does? You can play with that as long as you want, but that's not what we're here for. I just had to show you that because now we're going to do the cool part on how to make the pixel art using this trace tool we just learned. I think I was gonna do another example. While we're here, check this out. So we're gonna go to a square. This is a square pixel. If you intuitively say, I wanna take the color of this image and change the color of my clone. So if I did color, you'd think it would change it so you have your pixel art, right? So I'll do create. <laughs> but it does nothing. Control Z one more time. In a way, you kind of max out your capabilities with opacity. I think that, I just thought that was cool. If you can use this in your projects, go ahead and play with that. But let's go ahead and make the pixel art with the secret. The secret is we're going to change the fill color to an unknown. And if you're gonna play along, I'll have a link to this image. It's from pexels.com in the description below. So let's take this square and we'll pop it on top of our base image, just like before. But this time, before we go to create tiled clones, let's make sure we're on fill. We're not gonna be blue. We're gonna choose the question mark. Unset paint, make it undefined so it can be inherited. Click on that. Paint is undefined. Now go to create tile clones. Make sure you have the checkbox on trace the drawing underneath, which we have. We're gonna look at the color. And this time when we click on color, it will do what we intuitively were trying to do before. I'll actually move this down. I wanna do like the, just her eyes, just one eye is pixelated so you can have that like 
advertising print ad effect. So we'll go with 40 by 40, create. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, there we go. Does this speak to everyone plugged into social media, one eye on social media, the digital world, one eye on, I don't know. Just I just thought it was very interesting to highlight the tool, specifically the unset color. I wanna do one more with the entire face to show you another way to control the outcome of your pixel art. To make the pixel art kind of pop, you do wanna have a lot of contrast in the image. So you can take these images in Photoshop or Affinity or whatever your favorite raster software tool is, but you can also do it inside of Inkscape. So watch this, click on the picture. We'll go to Filters Color. And down here you see Lightness Contrast. Click on that. Make it so you can see our menu. Now I've got this set up. This is my preset. I know that'll look good. Let's say it was way off and you're clicking on it and it looks like that. Like what's going on here? You can always zero it out. So click zero, zero. Sometimes you have to undo live preview. That gets you back to the original image and you can kind of play with it. I want to go with something around plus seven on the contrast and a four for lightness. Apply. Okay, let's see what happens. So again, I'm gonna go with a square, this little one right here. Pop it on top of my image. Go to fill and stroke, go to your question mark. Unset paint. Then back to create tile clones. I'm gonna go with 90 by 70 to get as much as I can. Create. There you go, okay, let's take this aside. That's pretty cool. So I think it's cool. I hope you can use the tool. I'm gonna do one more, I'm gonna do, let's do the butterfly. So this butterfly also came from Pexels pexels.com thank you i'll have the description in the link below and for this one i want to make it a little bit more cartoony so i'll go with the bigger pixel we'll pop it in over here by now you know what's coming can't do it blue go to fill and stroke change it to the unset color create tell clones i've got it on 23 by 40 just to match up on this underlying image create <laughs> I just think that's like, it's pretty, I mean, there's other ways to do pixel art, but this is so fast. You have a lot of control. Look at that. See this black line down there? That's because I went over the edge of the source image. You can just grab that whole line. If you're on selector tool, just create a box around the bottom there and go delete. I think I will add a stroke because I don't know if these white lines look as good in a cartoon type mode. So I'll grab everything. Fill and stroke, just add in the stroke. And since it's not unset color, it's gonna be a black. That's kind of cool too. I'll do the unset color stroke so it'll play along just like the fill did, question mark. All that did is it made every single stroke for every single pixel here turn the same color as the fill. I don't know, I think that's kind of useful if you wanna add some type of pixel art or play with pixel art. I feel like doing a retro invite or poster or something like that. One more tool before we go. If you guys checked out the ultimate quick start guide, if you're new to Inkscape, there was a tool highlight we did on the eraser. And this is an example where eraser does work. Eraser doesn't work very intuitively at all, but if you click on eraser under mode, delete objects touched by the eraser, watch what happens. If I wanna get real fine tuned, anything that you draw on top of is gonna get deleted out by the eraser, see? So if you wanna move quickly, you can kinda of just draw along those pixels you don't like. And I know the real pixel art people like to make it symmetrical and you can do that if you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a dirty version right here and swing my eraser all the way around to clip out the shape. And I'll cheat with an editing snap to get rid of the last part, like that. Okay, let's grab everything. Control G to group it. And that's gonna do it for this tutorial. I appreciate your patience with me trying to unpack that one, but hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you wanna make some pixel art or just learn the inherit unset color tool. And if you think someone could benefit from watching some of these, give it a share. There's another one, that's what I did before. Somehow it's darker. 